Um, this is a bit of a, a mystery, really. The, the Murats of Bournemouth only came to be known to me um, as individuals less than 10 years ago. I got interested in the family history much too late, as is often the way. My father died when I was in my 20s, and um, I always explained the odd surname as, as well, my father was born in Italy. Um, uh, and as soon as I said that he was of Greek origin, they, people's brow would borrow and it got a bit complicated, so I just left it at that. And by the time I realised that it wasn't a typical Italian name either, um, it was too late to ask him any questions. So the fact that their story could be lost so quickly is quite uh, insightful and uh, salutary lesson to all of us. You know, I grew up in England and learned Italian and had, went to visit Italy a lot. But their story and their origin is to do with Greece and Turkey. Um, and really, it's, it, this, this is the family grave in Trieste, Italy, although it's naturally an Austrian port, perhaps, to argue. And my father's at the bottom. And the, top, the first tomb that was made for my great grandmother, who came from, was born in Smyrna. And this is my inheritance from. Uh, which I've sorted, and that's my grandfather's uh, camera, which I brought with me. And it's just that these strange documents written in languages um, I didn't understand were Greek, Franco Chiotica, uh, French, uh, some English notes, um, and of course, Ottoman mainly, because a lot of it pertains to Ottoman properties. And for the sake of detective work, my theory is that. They fall into two groups. That they were Joseph's, my uh, grandfather's souvenirs, if you like. That was his box that were handed to me uh, by my aunt, survived, who, who lives in, still in, in, in Italy. Um, and she'd always planned to go through these letters with my father when they retired, and never to happen, and, and figure out what they meant. Um, so I've divided them into two groups, photographs and personal letters that were addressed to my grandfather when he was working in Vienna um, as a young man. And what must have been brought, the rest must have been brought to Trieste in 1922, which are the, the, the travel and identity papers and contracts, church documents, all the sort of wills and testament things that you would take when you had to leave in a home. And this the first of the photos, so there's two halves to this presentation, I'll, I'll try to keep it brief. I think the most interesting ones are what I call the souvenirs of, of, of my grandfather's life as a young man in, in Smyrna, and um, that he had to leave, and then there's any number of documents that I've got that uh, sort of a few examples I've finished with, just to show you the sort of things that I'm discovering um, as they're translated through, thanks to Craig and the, and the Levantine Heritage Foundation, I've met people such as Umi here tonight who can, who can shed light on this, this marvelous uh, heritage I've discovered. Um, this is the family that was taken. In, in, this is uh, Jean Burat, the, the my great grandfather. And my grandfather's the eldest, although he's the shorter of the <coughs> children. On, he's on the right, Joseph. Name. And uh, uh, we have Maritza, or uh, Marie, his sister, and um, Yanni, uh, oh, sorry, Kimon, his, his brother, um, and uh, oh, of course uh, Christina Hajikosti, is her surname, which is a very important family in Smyrna, Greek family, uh, about which there could be many presentations, but um, I've focus really on the Murat family, because that's the mystery for me. <laughs> I don't know any further back than, than Dr. Jean Murat, who was the head of the family of my grandfather's family. Um, so this is my grandfather growing up. He must have been about 13 here. Um, he uh, probably taken in 1910 in, in Smyrna, uh, just about to look for his first job or enter the adult world. He is around the same time, I imagine, with his younger brother, Kimon. And 
he would have liked to kept, keep a picture of his sister and his mother with him, no doubt, when he was working in Vienna. Um, I discovered that the, her surname, Hadji Kosti, is a, is a sign of status, means that you've done the, uh, the trip to Jerusalem. Um, and thanks to genealogy, genealogists who I met through the Levantine Heritage Foundation, um, it's fairly easy to find out a lot about uh, uh, their family and a very long-standing family in cinema as well. Um, and it seems Dr. Jean Murat had uh, married well into one of the oldest Greek families in Smyrna. Um, and Marie, bless her, the young daughter there was of the unlucky generation, my grandfather's generation, who grew up a cert expecting a certain sort of privileged existence, I suppose, fairly wealthy in the, in the wealthy suburb of, of Bornova, um, only to have their world turned upside down, as so many millions did. In, uh, in the First World War. Um, this is a blow up of a, a very small photo of my grandfather's, a, a souvenir when he went hiking with people unknown. Uh, presumably, one of them is either uh, Dr. Jean Murat or, or a relative. Um, but my grandfather can identify as the one on the left, the young man with the bare knees enjoying a hike. This is actually a Hittite wall carving on Mount Nif, one of the several uh, low, known locally as a, one of uh, as Mount Olympus. I think there are about 17 Mount Olympus throughout the Hellenic world. Um, and it's about a day's trek from Bornova, so I guess this was the destination for their hike. They stopped to take a photograph and uh, then walked back home. Uh, Probably the same trip because he's got the same hiking socks on. He's on the left, and there they are. With the, you can see the dogs that sleep on the, in the shade. Um, you wonder if any of you knew any faces there. Um, I have the moustache of the chap with the dark jacket on. It seems to be waxed. He's standing up quite high. Uh, this has got to be a different uh, trip, I think. Um, is different, wearing different clothes. I've looked quite closely and I can only recognise again my grandfather, he's holding the gun. So they used to go hunting. And this is the first and only, unfortunately, photograph that has a subscription, uh, sub, uh, inscription on the back. Um, grandfather again, Joseph on the left, holding a cigar. I imagine he put his camera on timer, got his colleagues to pose and then ran around. Um, and, uh, that's the inscription, Joe. Uh, so he was working as a banking auditor or examiner in Vienna in the uh, year, war year 1918. Um, and can't really, I've translated that, I won't read it out to you, there doesn't give much insight, but uh, it's a souvenir. May you remember your, your boss who made you so nervous and your years as a good auditor, although the uh, word auditor could mean examining or inspecting or testing it. The translation doesn't really shed much light as to what he was doing in Vienna, but there he was. Um, I subsequently found out that he was probably working for the Afenduli family, who are who were a large business uh, enterprise um, and also might have been the reason why he ended up in Trieste in subsequent years because uh, that's another port where they had a lot of financial and uh, commercial interest. Um, but why was he in Vienna in the first place? Um, I imagine because of the great outbreak of war, he would have had to leave as a young man. He would have been in danger of being conscripted. Uh, and being a Christian, but that didn't mean going to fight, um, I imagine that even as a, a Muslim, it wouldn't be a great prospect. I think uh, the, the enthusiasm for war that uh, we have in England, when we think about the First World War and, the, and what made our, our young men sign up, didn't exist so much in, in the Ottoman Empire. And, and certainly a lot of the Christians would have paid a tax. I think it was called the Haraji, I read in lieu of military service, which meant they didn't have to go out and be massacred on the Russian front or in 
Gallipoli, and could actually, it was a bit of a privilege it worked out to avoid having to, to, to go and fight on behalf of the Ottoman Empire. Um, because these people, despite being Christians, are obviously Ottoman citizens. <coughs> Um, I've only learned this recently on Mega's story, so please apologise for any, any assumptions or any factual errors I've made there. But um, uh, in 1914 as well, of course, a lot of uh, the capitulations that so many of the richer families had been relying on um, for their income had been cancelled, and uh, people were beginning to look at other ways, and sending your son abroad to work, would probably be a good way to look for different, different to spread the risks and also avoid them, ensure they don't get conscripted. Um, this is a letter from grandmother Christina saying, unfortunately, announcing to her um, to her other son that her the younger brother had died aged only 17. Um, she'd included a, a photo, she, she's thanking uh, uh, elder son for having sent her this, this photograph of the, uh, a copy of it uh, to remember her son by and I assume, she doesn't say, but I assume he died of uh, being so young of, of influenza which struck millions at, around that time um, and she also says unfortunately that his that um, he should notify his aunt Costi, she's too uh, affected, nervous uh, nervously by the by the by the loss, and that she's asking that he write to uh, his aunt Costi, Espina Costi in Athens, to um, announce the tragedy, and um, that his father Jean is actually quite well, although he is in a calmer condition because he does and does not feel the loss of this huge and irreversible, irreversible tragedy. You should know he has softening of the brain. So whether this is Alzheimer's or a nervous condition, I, I can only speculate. To have this condition so young, um, with what well, one assumes he's young, because he's always a teenager, um, I wonder what he did as a doctor, whether he might have been traumatized by, he might have been recruited to go to the front, or, or maybe he, it is a genuine illness. We may never know why he died, but he did the next year. So while well, Joseph's away working in Vienna, loses his brother, and then shortly afterwards his father, Jean Marat. No, written here in English. Why? Well, this is the Levin Times, a very polyglot. Um, why they refer to him on, on the notice, you know, which is in French, to him as John Murat, I don't know, maybe he was a doctor in the service of the English Levin Times in Bonnevat, there were a lot of English there only have this letter and the note on the back which um, is actually to the boss of Joseph who's still a young man perhaps she wanted to make sure that he got the news in company that his father had died and uh, she's writing in French to him in uh, 1918 to say that Dr. Jean-Marie had died. Um, so that's all uh, I've, I have got other letters that um, I haven't got around to translating, but that, the rest are um, really uh, official documents that uh, we, can, we can glean facts from and uh, are perhaps of historic interest and examples of people with these sort of things in their loft, um, identity papers, church documents, contracts relating to property, insurance certificates, dowry agreements, uh, and a will and testament, which I assume were brought with them um, in 1922. I don't know how they got away, but they did, whether they were helped by Charles Dobson or, or whether they managed to get on to uh, Eleven, helped by Eleven Time, particular Eleven Time family, who knows, but uh, they did get away. This is uh, the identity documents of, uh, in Ottoman Turkish, obviously, of, of my grandmother and my uh, Great Aunt Marie, the uh, spinster, that uh, screen, that, that word, circle there means room, uh, or Christian. That's the uh, birth certificate of my, uh, baptism certificate, sorry, of Yusuf, 
um, my grandfather. He was baptised in the Church of the uh, St. Mary's of Mary's Assumption of Mary in Bournemouth in 1894. That's the seal. There's another. This is um, entitles someone to a pew. As we, ten Ottoman lira have been paid for a position in the pew of the above mentioned church in the ladies' quarter of the church. There's that seal again. Um, this is for a patch of land for a family too. 1999. And there's the only photos I can find of the actual church which come from Carraras, who was uh, 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 a biographer of the families of that Greek families of that village, uh, from town, 15,000 people uh, at the time. And it was different from Smyrna. It didn't suffer the fire. It suffered from war. Uh, basically, the, the, the Turkish army rolled in and selectively burned things, I imagine. This is a wonderful letter, it's been on the site for years, written from a cousin, Murat, in Beirut. Uh, they got away and just absolutely uh, delighted to have found, to be in contact with Marie, um, to hear how that she survived and wondering what she's doing and whether she, what her plans are. They're in Athens. Um, they've been there long enough that Athens would have been a, just basically a huge refugee camp. Um, at that time, uh, October 1922, um, and what plans they're making, are they coming, they've been going down to the, to the port to see whether or not they're on the ship, um, and then she recounts at length about all the other Levantine families that they knew had been brutalised or how they escaped. This is a rather touching document. Um, it's the identity document issued in Athens, don't know how they got to Athens, but they did, thank goodness. Um, and Nicholas Costi is the brother of my grandmother, so it's my great aunt, no, my great uncle. And um, this was issued uh, in Athens, and, and these photos are not the same people we saw earlier. There's haunted looks. Um, there's a cart behind there. I think they've slept for a while. And then finally, these are the sort of documents that have been helped, that were brought with them um, in their hurry that my aunt had preserved, thank goodness, uh, permission to draw water uh, relating to a property, here's a rental agreement, uh, there's an insurance document, I've got dozens of them here, if you want to see the real ones, I've got them, I've got them. And that's, this is quite tragic <laughs> a an insurance for against fire for, just to finish with of uh, in the name of where is it Madame Vouve Christine <laughs> widow Christine Murat of Bornova and this is her shop that she ran in the famous room Frank in, in the center of Smyrna which she presumably been running for years um, while her son was in Vienna working um, some of the letters relate to things that he'd obviously sent her. Don't send any more shoes, they're not selling, that sort of thing. Um, so he obviously had, had kept her in, in supplied in with this to sell. <coughs> and sentimental reasons, that's my dad as well. Uh, that's my granddad. So he got to Trieste, met his Triestine wife, and the rest they say is history. <laughs> so I have to thank some people here, Umitz here, who's helped me with the Ottoman text, George about whom I wouldn't know any, any historical context for this. He's been fantastic and other friends, really, who've, who've dealt with the French and the Greek texts. Hopefully that's brief enough to uh, give you a flavour. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Um, and uh, you want to have a look after us at some documents? I've, I've brought them as well. Thank you very much. <laughs>